Welcome to Should You Heck. I'm your host, and today I'm going to answer an important question. Should you mod your 3DS? I've never been a big fan of the 3DS. We've had our moments, sure. Some Pokemon here, some Smash Brothers there, you know, the normal stuff. But it wasn't until I discovered the amazing world of custom firmware that the 3DS took over as my favorite handheld console. But 3DS modding isn't for everyone, so hopefully by the end of this video you'll have the tools you need to decide if it's right for you. While the risks involved in modding a 3DS have gone down significantly since it was introduced and is constantly being improved, there are still some very real risks involved that you should be aware of. The first and the worst is the very slim chance of permanently bricking your 3DS. This risk is essentially zero as long as you follow the modding guides perfectly, but it's still worth mentioning. There's also the risk of getting banned online, especially if you're the type to cheat in online games. It's best practice to turn off any modifications before playing online. You can also mess up the functionality of your device if you don't know what you're doing, so be careful out there. It's legal. Next topic. There are a few important things you'll need to have if you want to mod your 3DS. Here we're talking about soft modding specifically. You will need a copy of an exploitable game. As of now, that's either Cubic Ninja, Super Smash Bros. 1.0, or Ocarina of Time. The proper SD card for your device. A screwdriver if you have a new 3DS because Nintendo hates convenience. And finally, you will need the internet. Ah, the moment you've been waiting for. It is time for the benefits of modding. There's far too much to cover when it comes to 3DS modding benefits, so I urge you to check out the 3D Shack subreddit linked in the description. Here are some of my favorites. Running an FTP server on your 3DS to avoid plugging your SD card into your computer. Streaming gameplay to your computer without a hard mod. Making or downloading your own custom theme that would not normally be available in the eShop. The ability to run countless homebrew applications like emulators and special game ports. Playing games out of your region, as well as game mods and translation patches. Backing up physical copies of games so you never have to bring the cards with you on the go. This leads nicely into... Piracy. Yes, this is the reason most people hack their 3DS, to avoid paying for games. I'm not necessarily condoning piracy, however, it is very easy to get games for free if you know where to look. While the modding process can take a while to complete, and 5 plus hours certainly isn't uncommon, the benefits in my opinion far outweigh the risks and the time involved. It certainly can be daunting to newcomers, but user, uh, playlect? Plyelect Pla has created an awesome and easy to follow guide that is constantly being updated. If you ever need help at any point during the modding process, the fine folks at the 3D Shacks IRC are there to help. Links are in the description. So go on out there and mod your 3DS today. You probably won't regret it. Young Bay's guide in Olympics. Stay fucking bitches. Got the chopsticks with extension. Hoes on my dick cause I look like Madlock, bitch.